Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If you are new here or you've been sitting in the shadows and you enjoy what you are hearing, please show that subscribe button some love and make sure you turn your notification bell to on because I post daily. And if disturbing stories are your thing, you wouldn't want to miss out. If you have a personal story about your life that you've been through, such as a ghost encounter, a UFO, or creepy stalkers right after you, maybe someone chased you home. Please, if you want that read right here on Back to Ashes, please email me at backtoashes, the number two, at gmail.com, and I'll gladly narrate your personal story. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin, entitled True Ouija Stories. Right after this intro, there will be an ad. I'll read the first story, there will be an ad. And after that, you can enjoy an ad-free experience for the rest of the video. Disclaimer, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes. I have never been into paranormal stuff because I've had enough activity happen to me over the year. Over the last summer, my friends and I decided it was a good idea to make our own Ouija board and play it, right there at the house and also at the cemetery. They asked it stuff that I knew was true and they didn't. Right there, I could sense it was a real thing. Then, out of curiosity, my friend Kay says, Will our friend P be pregnant at age 19? And it said yes. Flash forward a few months later, and I got a call from P saying she's actually pregnant. And in that moment, I have never been so awestruck and freaked out at the same time. Nothing like that has ever worked. And now I'm a little more freaked out. Now that I know the board worked. I cannot believe that it came true and that the board predicted something insane like that. I'm kind of excited about the other stuff we ask it, but also very leery of it too. So, I've always been somewhat of a believer in the paranormal, but didn't buy into the whole thing of spirits and demons were common. That is, until I had some things happen to me as an adult. As a child, I experienced a few things that were also witnessed by my mother, so I knew that there were some truths to it all. About four years ago, I experienced something one night that has changed my life forever. At first, I was pretty excited over what had happened, but then the flip of a switch, it all turned dark very dark. I was investigating my own experience, doing everything I could or had seen on TV. Yeah, I know now that that was a huge mistake. But at the time, I was trying to get answers, and I was willing to do anything that I could to get them, even something that I had always sworn I would never do, attempting to use a spirit board. I was doing all of my investigating by myself, which was another mistake, and I was going to the cemetery where it all started by myself at all hours of the night. Another huge mistake. One day I got the bright idea of downloading the Spirit Board app on my phone. The first time I used it, I just got what I expected. Garbage. But I didn't give up. After several attempts, I made one more attempt. This time, things were different. I was sitting at my kitchen table, turned on the app, and started to ask questions. The answers were coming quickly and accurately. I thought to myself, wow, maybe this time it's working. I was still very skeptical and thought to myself, I'm going to debunk this thing and bust it as a fake. 
I asked if they could see me. The answer was yes. I asked for its name. I was given Moriah. I then asked, where am I sitting? The answer was kitchen table. I asked what I am wearing. It answered correctly. I then asked it, where are you at? It answered with, next door in the cellar. I thought, I have you now. So I replied with, oh, so you're in the red brick one story next door then. It responded with no. I asked, which house are you in then? The answer made my blood run cold. It replied with, gray two-story on corner abandoned. When you look out my kitchen window, there is a gray two-story on the corner of the street, and it's been abandoned for several years. It also has a cellar, not a basement. I continued to have conversations with the spirit board app for several months. One night, I started at 1 in the morning and did not stop until almost 7 a.m. It only felt like 20 minutes had went by. This Mariah could tell me things about myself that nobody would know about. It would tell me about calls I had went to years ago as a police officer and what I had seen or felt. My haunting became very horrifying for several years, and I still deal with it daily and nightly. An investigation was done at my home, and they got the name Mariah as well, who they said was actually a succubus that was attached to me. I stopped using the Spirit Board app a long time ago, but I am still dealing with the very real issues of using one and not closing the door when done, using it by myself, and so on. I am here to tell you, just because you use one and you have no issues, that doesn't mean that your time isn't coming. And when it does, I feel sorry for what you're going to deal with. Please use with extreme caution. I guess I should start this off with some backstory. My name is Melanie. I moved into a house about seven months ago, and it was a disaster. I'm not the richest person, so there was a deal struck, and I cleaned the house out from the previous tenants. I haven't seen the place before I moved in. It was a desperate situation I would rather not dive into. When I moved in there... It was expired canned food and expired candy waist high from the living room to the kitchen. Shit and used condoms all over the floor. I'm talking it was bad. Coal stove. I'm a single mom. I have no clue what I was doing. Very old, rigid, together house. So, the first thing I noticed was that in the basement there is a tunnel dug out that has a small turn, that's not very long, that leads to a small, circular, tiny room. Only way I can explain it, maybe a small child could stand up in it, but I'm five foot two and I couldn't. All that is there is a light hanging from the middle of the ceiling. This is all just rock and cement. The only way I can explain the light is... And the brave little toaster? When they go to the store with the other appliances and that big lamp that sings, if you Google it, it'll look something like a pendant. I can't decide if that's cool or dumb. I digress. Okay, so then I get this weird video footage through my recording. I was using Facebook Messenger. I was sending a video of me playing my game on my laptop to my friend. It was only on my phone. It took up the whole screen, even my time and notifications. I checked all Facebook stories and open tabs and nothing. I had no idea where this is and I have never seen it before. It didn't appear on the computer, only on my phone. Okay, here's what you all been waiting for. Me and my 15 year old son were setting up the attic for his room. He recently decided to move up to the attic. 
It was always used for storage. There's a tiny cubby hole that we were clearing out. To the far left wall, the small end of the wall, was carpeted. Thinking that was really strange, I ripped the carpet down and found boards. And there was a crack in between two of them. So I used the flashlight and looked inside. And there was a whole other room, bigger than the cubby hole, that we were already in. Of course, me and him kicked the boards down like beasts. All that was in there was wooden shutters, wooden boards, pipes, and debris, and a lot of insulation. I saw a piece of wood that looked strangely smooth and out of place, so I flipped it over and discovered a Ouija board. I've done some research since, and it is a 1939 William Fold mystifying oracle board. I did not find the planchette with it, but I found that weird triangle thing. My 15-year-old son said, fuck this, I'm out, and left me there to be possessed. Since then, I have put the Ouija board on the mirror of my dresser as a decoration. Everybody keeps telling me to get rid of it and burn it. I don't want to. I don't feel anything evil from it. I kind of really feel a connection with it. I'm not trying to be all Reagan Captain Howdy here, but it's the truth. I also forgot to mention the weird things that have been happening. Normal things like toys going off or things going missing and reappearing. Recently, me and my friend, who is frequently here, have been seeing things. People. I saw a man twice. I can chalk the first one up to my mind playing tricks on me. It was a split second he was there. I looked at my phone and he was gone. But a week later, I was driving down a dark back road that is really windy. I live out in the boonies where there's nothing but woods everywhere. I was driving and of course paying attention because I had my son in the car. Not that I don't pay attention when it's just me. And there was nothing there. But then, I looked in the rearview mirror, and I looked three separate times within the span of a few seconds. Not ten feet away was a man slowly walking away from the car in the middle of the side of the street I was driving on. He came out of absolutely nowhere, and there's no way he could have been there that fast. Not as close to the car as he was. He had a fedora, bowler hat looking thing on, and what looks like a suit jacket, and he was walking very slow. I saw him three separate times when I looked in the rearview mirror, and then he was gone. My 12-year-old son says he did not see him. He didn't see the other man either. So, I guess I really don't know what to do with all of this information, and I'm not really new to all of this. But, please help me. I guess what I really want is information, especially on the video footage and what could possibly be going on in this house, or what could have been going on. Thank you all. God bless. Stay safe out there. All right, you all. I'm going to take just a quick second. Ouija boards, you're always supposed to say goodbye. You're never supposed to burn them and this and that. Isn't the whole Ouija board on the mirror even worse? Because I've heard of spirits and demons coming through the mirrors. And this woman just taped it up on her mirror like it's another freaking decoration. I don't know. Leave your comments below. I'm interested to see what you all think. Back to our stories. Okay. Choose to believe me or not, but I promise that my stories are true. We're witnessed, as you will hear throughout this story. During the summer of my junior year in high school, a group of my friends, both girls and boys, would regularly mess around with the Ouija board. At first, I remember it being a joke. We would ask the board the typical types of questions to get the most laughs, such as, Does Manny have a vagina? Then all the guys would quickly move the pointer to yes. High school humor at its best. 
Over a time period of a week or so of messing around with it, nearly every day it slowly became apparent that something different was happening. We went through a day and maybe two of accusing one another of moving the pointer. We all denied that we were moving it, but we all knew that someone was indeed moving it. We had all learned of the phenomenon where one's mind can manipulate a string through the subconscious mind by manipulating the fine motor nerves, causing muscle contractions, which made the strong appear to move. Quite simply, we would not be made to look like a fool in front of the girls. Nobody admitted moving it. Cut clearly, someone was doing it, and we all had our suspicions based on which guy would seem to take the most advantage of the ever-growing uneasiness in the girls over the days that followed by sitting ever so closely and putting his arms around her to calm her nerves. From a clear and obvious view at the beginning that we would each take turns moving the pointer even after swearing to each other that we wouldn't move it. It was just too funny to get a reaction. Two days and weeks later to making a few key observations that the board seemed to move more fluidly, no more was an obvious pause like the pointer mover looking where the next letter on the board was. Nonetheless, whoever was moving it was simply getting better at it. I do not quite recall the specific chain of events on how we discovered what happens next, but I can clearly recall that a turning point was reached. Everything changed the first night at the park during a particularly dark night when we learned that we were talking to a boy spirit whose name was Zach. We learned how he had apparently died, his age, when he died, as well as which girl he apparently was developing a crush on. I say that this was the turning point because after this night, every other night that followed was clearly different. Fast forward to a following night, possibly a couple of passing days. We all decided as a group to take the Ouija board to one of the girls' house who happened to live in a very old, 100-plus-year-old house compared to the rest of us who lived in a newer house. I do not know if it was the atmosphere and our moods, but the pointer was moving at speeds that were baffling. We literally had to do what you see in movies and had someone, me, write it down the letters that the pointer was stopping at before quickly moving to the next without any pre-planning whatsoever. Complete sentences, phrases, and stories were coming out, all the while having a certain misspelled words that one would attribute to a young boy. To say we were scared is an understatement. I can go on and on about the questions we asked Zach that summer and how his answers would both make immediate sense at times and at other times would reveal themselves down the road in surprising fashion. For example, there was a girl whom all, if the guys were intrigued with, not in our group, just that summer, and I recall asking Zach if I would get to know her, and the answer given was, 23 days. 23 days later, she asked me to the next guy and girl dance at our school. We did not speak to her, and even if she got wind that I had a crush on her, that she would know of the 23 number issue. Stories continue to get both weirder and more accurate from there. There are many questions we ask Zach, such as when will we all die? Who would be the richest? What was the true religion? Does God exist? Answers for everything given, every time, and most of them were quite shocking. I decided to ask Zach who I would marry. The answer sent the group rolling on the floor laughing when the answer came back as redacted for privacy. The name came back as a boy's name, slightly misspelled but interpreted to be a boy. 
embarrassed, although I was not then, and not now a person who hated guys or disliked them, I felt the need to clarify my sexuality during those highly impressionable teen years, and quickly clarified with Zach that I would marry a beautiful woman and have children. Fast forward many years later, when I fell head over heels for the most stunning girl I had ever seen. While at a dessert party, it was a common Friday night affair in the area of Phoenix we lived at, I was introduced to a girl who had recently moved to the area from California. She went by the name, which was the name of the girl Zach told me I would marry. I knew immediately of my future, and we are still married. Over 18 years now and still going strong. I have many stories that could fill a book or hell, even a movie, but some of the most important always surrounded Zach's life and his crush on one of the girls that summer, which one time resulted in a terrifying midnight after the girl's boyfriend, as funny as this sounds, became jealous of Zach's attention to the girl, who Zach had now referred to as his girl. One night, again in the 100 plus year old house, Zach became noticeably irritated and it was clearly directed toward his girl and get a boyfriend. He kept saying cats over and over again. We didn't think much about it, but I clearly remember the guy trying to egg on Zach and make him mad, calling him names, telling him he is glad that he had stone, etc., etc. All fun and games to the guy who had called me when he got home, days before cell phones, literally crying like a baby that when he got home after midnight, there were multiple black cats in the back of his truck. Now, he could have made that up to me, but he was crying uncontrollably. And if anyone knows teen guys, especially my friends, football, baseball, etc., he wouldn't cry. Yet, he was, and trust me, I wasn't about to make fun of him because I know exactly why he was terrified. I have stories involving the control of the Ouija board without even touching the pointer. I don't mean that the pointer would move without anyone touching it, but more so where I would either tell the kids touching it to remain quiet and I would control it with my mind. I got so good at it that I could have Jim move the pointer in circles and then come to a complete stop by thinking it in my mind. If you don't believe that, then chalk it up to coincidence, which I understand that line of thought, unless you are here to witness the quick movement and abrupt complete stops. Then explain this one. Without me touching the Ouija board and being in a separate room, doors opened. I asked the kids at the pointer for the ultimate test to know if Zach knows his shit. I asked Zach, if you are who you say you are, and if you are with us right now, how many fingers am I holding up? Here is where the oh shit moment comes in. Because it would be freaky if he would have had the pointer say two or whatever. But the pointer spelled out R-A-B-B-I-T-E-A-R-S. I was holding up two fingers in a peace sign style. Zach was real. My experiences were real. The Ouija board is real. Supernatural phenomena is real. I witnessed some stuff that could not be faked. Choose to believe me or not, but I know my friends there certainly do, and the predictions asked of Zach all those years ago are still coming true. In a group that I was in dealing with the Ouija board, a question was asked, are Ouija boards really dangerous in a way that a demonic entity 
can be let in? No one can really answer this, but I respect any answer or theory advanced because no one really knows. I can speak only from my experiences since the last time I participated in these damn Ouija sessions back in college. But I'll say up front that, no matter what happened, I will never dismiss the alternate explanations exists. First Experience Three of us on a rainy afternoon and the power was out. Candles, wine, cigarettes. What the hell? Let's try the Ouija board thing. It was the roommate's idea. Skipping the boring details, this thing definitely spelled out my name and told me to drink more water. What? I took over and asked A, who is this? And B, what does drink more water mean? It spelled out George and a chill went through me. The others asked who George was. George is my middle name. I was named for my great-grandfather, a Belgian immigrant and World War I vet. He died when I was nine, and I can tell you that no one else there knew any of that. It wasn't until several months later that someone explained to me that drink more water supposedly meant. She was kind of a strange girl, friend of a friend, and a self-proclaimed medium. However, I never forgot this. She said very clinically, Are you absolutely certain those were the words that came through? She then said it meant he was trying to reach heaven, and drinking water purifies the body, and he needs your purity to get there. I had a sort of what-the-fuck moment about that. When I told her the man passed in 1977, she leaned in close to me as if she were expecting me to say that, and said, quoting pretty much to verbatim, But people see ghosts of the dead from centuries ago because to them there is no yesterday or today. Until they move on, there's only now. That's why your great-grandfather said that to you because to you, he's been dead for decades. To him, he's been dead one day. Bullshit? Hmm, probably. Yet intriguing, and I have to say, oddly sensical. Second, and really bizarre, experience. Also in college, maybe a year later, this time there were five of us, three of whom I had never met before. This was at around 1 a.m. after we had one of our famous house parties. A girl broke out a board and we sat and drank and ran the plant and shed around. Nothing much but gibberish and it was getting boring. Then my housemate suggested we try something. What if we did this blindfolded? Well, what good would that do if we couldn't read anything? She then said, Let's get a neutral observer to write everything down. Sounded like an interesting plan, so we recruited one of the stray derelicts from the back porch and asked him to take note, but not tell us what he wrote down until we took our blindfolds off. We all blindfolded each other, by the way. He agreed, and that's what we did. We went around asking questions. Is there anyone here? Do you know anyone here? Do you have a message for someone? And so on and so forth. Things were definitely happening. The planchette did not seem guided by us any longer. Getting to the point, we took off our blindfolds when we thought we had had enough. Our observer read out what we had spelled. What came through was Eileen, okay, Diamonds, and love you. That was all. Eileen, a cherubic red head and very Irish looking, was the girl, seated to my right, and I had never met her until that night. She gasped, her face turned blood red, and she yelled out, Oh my effing God! She burst into tears and ran out into the backyard screaming. 
The rest of us followed her, trying to calm her down. She was hyperventilating and actually had to be restrained for a few moments. After everything settled down, we found out it was the word diamonds. Diamonds was apparently what Eileen and her high school best friend for life, I think her name was Amanda, used to call each other. Amanda had been murdered by her stepfather several years earlier. Needless to say, a collective shudder settled on all of us, and we promptly put the board away. Conclusion So, I don't know. Was that genuine or an elaborate hoax? Did my great-grandfather really communicate with me? Or was that me spelling out his name and the water thing was just three monkeys on a typewriter? The blindfold thing, though. How do you explain that? If Eileen was faking, then she deserves either an acting award or she needs to be put in a rubber room. Is it possible it was faked? Of course, but I don't think so. Bottom line, I'm not touching another board again. This is my experience with the Ouija board. It was my third year in college. I was staying in the hostel. Me and some of my friends used to try all kinds of stuff. So, it wouldn't be surprising that the Ouija board thing got our attention. Okay, enough with the intro. Now the story. It was a night before our semester exam. Since we finished our studies already, we decided to try the Ouija board. We thought to give it a shot at around midnight, 12 o'clock-ish. But, first we needed the Ouija board. Making a Ouija board was not so tough, as we got tons of information from the internet. Me and my friend made it step by step, as they've instructed in how to do anything. After an hour, we created an exact replica of a typical Ouija board. I must tell you, it wasn't that scary after all. Clock ticked. Time is 12. We told everyone in our floor about this experiment and invited them. Some of them were taken aback and chose not to be involved. At last, we were about six in the room and decided to start the procedure. We switched off all the lights and put cell phones on silent mode. And then I started talking. I gave a warning to all about the things that could go wrong. And so if anyone wanted to leave, they would have to do so now. Because once we start calling the dead, nobody would not be allowed outside or inside. Everybody was okay with that. Then I set the mood for it by lighting a candle and placed the Ouija board beside it. As we decided already, two of my friends came forward and sat opposite to each other. Everyone was so calm and the situation was getting intense. The two guys sat very close and the Ouija board was placed above their lap. As instructed in the rules, their knees touched each other. So they both started focusing on the candlelight and placed their hands above one another on the board. Then I said, Dear spirits, we want to talk to one of you. We really wish you'd come talk to us. After a while, I spoke again. Is there any spirits in the room? Nothing answered. Nothing. Their hands were still. I asked again. No answer. Then, after some more again, I asked again. No fucking answer. Everyone was losing their patience, and so was I. I decided to give it another try. Is there any spirits in the room? Again, no movement of hands. Uh, oh, wait. They were moving. They were actually moving. We really couldn't believe our eyes, and the hands moved to the side of yes. I spoke again. 
Now that we know that you are here, we really wish to know your name, please. It started again. The hand. They were moving again, as we had expected this already. One of my friends took his notebook and started taking notes of the letters it mentioned. It was a bunch of random letters. We couldn't make any sense of it, but we couldn't leave it like that. You must know if you call the spirit, you should send him back too. And remember, all this time, those two guys who had a Ouija board on them had their eyes closed. I ask another question. So, how did you die? Once more, the hands were moving through a bunch of letters and finally settled on a word. Siva died. We were like, what the hell is this? Anyway, we proceeded further. I ask, when did you die? The time the hands were moving around the numbers in the board. The answer was November 5th, 1963. That was a pretty old one. I ask again, what's your wish? That was a foolish move. Why would I do that? Anyway, the hands were moving faster and we got an answer, which said, Dirge. We didn't know whether that was any word like this or not. By this time, all of us were very scared, so everyone showed me some actions to stop the shit. And thus I said, Okay, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for coming. Goodbye. After a minute, the guys opened their eyes and they seemed normal. They both said it was funny. Then I inquired them who made the moves. They both said, I don't know, I didn't. At the same time, everyone in the room started freaking out. Finally, one of those two guys accepted that he made the moves. The mood became lightened and everyone went to sleep. But before we went to sleep, he told me that he didn't do it and said that he didn't want to freak out our friends. We promised ourselves not to do that ever again. The next day, after the exam, I came to hostel around noon. Since I didn't like lunch, I went straight to our room. As I was undressing, that notebook my friend used to take notes grasped my attention. I took it and saw the results of yesterday's night drama. Suddenly, I thought, what if the word he meant was suicide, but not sibidide? Holy shit. Then I saw the word dirge. I took the dictionary and checked out the meaning. There was, in fact, a word as dirge, and it meant a laminate for the dead, especially one forming part of a funeral rite. My mind was blown. P.S. Believe it or not, this happened. I suggest you not try these things and this stuff, as they would disturb your mind. So, read it, forget it, and enjoy the life and make sure to help others. I'm going back and forth on the idea of telling my story. And after searching through a lot of subreddits, it seems like this is the best place and time to tell you. I still have my reservations though. Will people ask questions I don't have the answers to? Does it feature cliches that will make people question the truth of my experience as I've described it? Is this really the best place to tell you the story? In any case, I'm just going to go for it. I'm kind of looking for answers, I guess. But I barely even consider myself a member of the paranormal realm. When I was younger, I lived in a haunted house. Yeah, seriously. But it's been a while. I just want to share this and see what people make of it. 
I get the impression that you might be more experienced in this than I am. Okay, so several years ago, I was doing my undergrad studies at a large university in Pennsylvania. This even happened in 2005, maybe 2006. I was dating a girl, her name was Erin, at the time, who was big into New Age ideas, paganism, magic, and the like. And I did learn some pretty cool ideas from her. Eventually, I met some of her like-minded friends, and in our conversations, it came up that one of the rooms in the oldest building on campus caused the two of them, a guy and a girl who were dating, to experience a lot of psychic distress. Kyle had gotten nosebleeds in the classroom, and Julie often grew disoriented or frightened when she was there. Someone in our group had the bright idea to sneak up there one night, and of course, we all went for it. It was me, Kyle, Julie, Aaron, a medium named Audra, and her friend Sharon. Oh, and also another girl named Keisha. Sharon and Keisha, like me, had had a lot of supernatural experiences in the past, but didn't consider themselves mediums or sensitives or anything of the sort. So, one night, we bought a novelty Ouija board from Walmart, a glow-in-the-dark one, because why the hell not, and started doing our thing. At first, the planchette didn't do anything, but then it started twitching, and eventually, it was whipping around choosing letters that made no sense to any of us afterwards. Kyle was writing the letters down. Then, out of nowhere, Audra started many convulsions. I don't know how else to describe it. Her eyes rolled up and she started spasming and making these horrific pig noises. Not just snorting or squealing, but belting those noises out like I never thought a human would be able to do. She started crawling her way towards the door. The planchette was going crazy, and when Kyle jumped at her to keep her from heading toward the stairs, which were directly across the hall, I think, we all kind of snapped out of it. Audra was a small, slim girl, but it took three or four of us to keep her from leaving the room. And all the while, there were still horrible noises coming from her, and we all had this incredible sense of danger or foreboding. There wasn't a terrible smell or anything like you read about sometimes, but it was terrifying. Not to be anticlimactic here, but... After that, we packed everything up, went back to my crappy apartment over a crappy pizza shop, and stayed huddled together for quite a while that night. I swear I threw out that Ouija board, but years later, I would find it under my bed at my parents' house when I was packing up to move. I can't swear 100% to throwing it out, but I also can't imagine why I would have held on to it brought it home, and stowed it away under my bed. Seriously, any thoughts or similar experiences or general comments would be great. I'm sorry if this is the wrong venue for the story or if it's a little boring, but at the time, it scared the shit out of me, and it still does to this day. In October of 2007, I was invited to conduct a session for a group of people as part of their Halloween festivities in the Spalding area, Lincolnshire. Having conducted a number of sessions for them in the past, I agreed to attend and conduct a session by their request at, at 3 a.m. as considered to be the witching hour. I produced a Hellgate board Please don't ask, I will not tell you. An oak for the event. Again, something I had done before and used to get some really good responses with. 
The event started off normally with the lighting of the candles, sealing of the glass, and a protection ritual. There were six of us, myself included, around the board, and eight spectators, including my scriber, who was responsible for recording all of the board activity for review at a later time. We had a resident presence, our Fred, come through and spent a bit of time with us, much to the enjoyment of the group, before we said goodbye to him and let him move on. Things then went really quiet for a bit before we started to get another response. From the outstart, something just did not feel right with this presence. I can't explain it. There was just this feeling deep inside of me. We had a lot of glass movement, but at the same time, it was very sporadic. It would give us no information and refused to follow simple instructions such as returning to the center of the board. Now, initially, there was nothing abnormal here. Jokers and clowns do this all the time before they settle down. However, the force on the glass was slowly getting more forceful the longer we tried to make actual communication with the entity. As we progressed, the entity seemed to be getting more confident with itself and the glass movement started to become even stronger, and it was spending more time trying to head to my line of limitation. Located in front of the Hellgate, with the group having to physically stop the glass on more than one occasion. All of this time, though, not a single thing had been said through the board, and at this point, we still had no idea who or what we were dealing with. After a few minutes of this, the glass finally started spelling out things. But at that moment in time, it just appeared to be gibberish to us. It was my scriber that actually realized that we were getting messages through. The reason we could not understand what was being said was because everything was being given to us in reverse. Now, this is where I should have stopped the session there and then, potentially facing a negative entity and close the board. Instead, I let intrigue get the better of me and allow the session to continue, something I have regretted for many years after the event. We continued to get responses, both in reverse and now normal phrases, mostly threatening those on the board, and then we started receiving responses in what we found out after the event through research, Latin. In my whole spirit board career, I have never received anything in Latin during any previous events. I had heard about it happening through my teachings, and apparently it was not a good sign, but never experienced it. The one phrase we got upon review that I will never forget was, Angelus Reprobi, which we translated to Fallen Angel. During all of this time, we never received a name for the entity, and the glass got that strong in its movements. At one point, the six of us on the board were struggling to keep up with it. The session came to a finale, with people now starting to panic a little, with the glass making a direct line for Hellgate on the board. We quickly applied all the pressure we could to stop it, and I found myself shouting at the entity to return to the center of the board. The glass started moving a little slower than it had all evening. I remember thinking that maybe it had used most of its energy during this dash on the board and fighting us to try to stop it, and positioned itself at the center. Then... The glass imploded. Now understand this. This thing did not just shatter outwards or crack or come apart. This thing went in on itself. This, honestly, was the second time in my life that I actually felt true fear. After being taken back for a few moments, 
and after gathering my thoughts, I conducted an impromptu cleansing ritual, and we quickly and appropriately disposed of the board. Myself and three others experienced very disturbing nightmares following the event over the next few nights, and even more eerily, they all were very similar in nature. A very tall, dark figure taunting us from within the shadows, faceless people being horrifically tortured and the death of loved ones, all very graphic in nature. My marriage with my very loving wife also broke down very quickly afterwards, as well as a run of other bad luck that seemed to follow me for a period of time after. I vowed, following this event, that I would never have anything to do with spirit boards again, and have not touched one since, despite numerous requests over the years from people I have previously met through holding sessions for them. I still have contact with some of the people, and who were still close friends, that were there during that morning and witnessed the events that unfolded. We recollect that night in conversation occasionally and laugh about it now, but there still exists an uncomfortable feeling of just how lucky we were to get off as lightly as we did. There are things in the world, and we just cannot comprehend it. Using spirit or Ouija boards can open doorways to things that are really not very nice at all. I believe we encountered a very negative entity that morning, even though I had done everything right and according to my teachings. This is why people who have used boards and had negative occurrences tell others to take heed and stay away from them. They are not paranoid nor overreacting. They have seen and experienced it for themselves and they do not want to see others harmed, potentially go through a diabolical haunting or some other misadventure. And that, dear listeners, brings it close to these true Ouija stories. Before I go on any further, I would like to acknowledge the elite members of Back to Ashes. Samantha Plays, Colt Stonewolf, Stephanie McLaren, Tammy Slayton, Christy Elias, Sugar Spite, Tina Mead, Cindy, Amy Klemko, Anita B., Dova Khaleesi, Ida Smith, Buzz Crispin, Patty's Niece, Denise S., Call Me Carter, Corpse Lover, and Cindy Cleveland. Thank you all so much for your continued support. For without you supporting, there would not be a me and there would not be a Back to Ashes channel. Thank you. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this selection. In the meantime, please take care of yourselves and stay safe out there. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.